What is up guys, Team Yugi Fields here today with another video taking a look at the deck profile. You guys already know the drill. It's got to be Burning Abyss. We, we already know that's what it's going to be. Uh, but before we hop into it, if you guys aren't subscribed already, make sure you go ahead and smash that subscribe button. Turn the notification bell on. Uh, we're obviously climbing the subscriber count, which is really awesome. I appreciate everyone's support so far. It's been an absolutely fantastic ride the last year. Um, you know, this is the upcoming week of celebrating everyone uh, being put under their, what we thought was going to be two week quarantine. Uh, now we're looking at, you know, 52 weeks, but uh, I'm going to go ahead and hop on over to the deck profile so you guys can check out this spicy list. Alrighty, so what we have here is a super spicy Burning Abyss list, and the reason that it's spicy is that I didn't go for 40 cards, I didn't go for 60 cards, I went for 50. Uh, it was a very, very odd choice. There was a lot of cards that I wanted to play, and I had to unfortunately just keep adding cards over and over again, and I said, I don't want to do 60. I, I've done 60 card decks in the past, and don't get me wrong, they're fun, but I just didn't feel like doing it for this. So we have a 50 card Burning Abyss uh, Pure it is pure. There's no mixture. It's not with Phantom Knight. It's not with Eldritch. Nothing like that. This is just straight up Burning Abyss with 50 cards. Uh, it's pretty cool. So I'm going to go ahead and hop into this. Um, and I am actually double sleeving today. So before we hop into this, let me just show you guys. Um, you know, I, I have the KMC character guards, which a lot of people ask me about for a while, um, which is the, the outer sleeve. The inner sleeve is the new uh, Dark Magician Girl sleeves that were just released uh, my locals ended up getting them yesterday when i walked in um so i i had to pick them up look pretty cool so let me just separate all this by uh monsters really quick because everything is a lot uh, a lot thicker with those double sleeves on it so to start off for the ba lineup we have three graph uh three seer three skarm and three farfa these are all of our three ofs um I've been seeing a lot of people put Farfa to two lately and Skarm to two. For a while, I was only playing two Skarm. And when I looked at like trying to see how I could maximize, um, you know, the chances of getting a good opening hand in a 50 card list, it just seemed like playing three of each was the proper route. Um, so we're, we're sticking with three of each of those. And then we just have uh, another BA that we play a two of, which is two Libic. Libic is just really, really good. Um, you know, especially considering some of the stuff that we play in here. You, you'll see why as we progress. But then the one of I just do one Bar Bar and one Alec. Um, they could be interchangeable, whatever you guys want to play. But I find that the Bar Bar does come up uh, somewhat frequently, being able to burn your opponent down, whether it's uh, for remaining life that you need to kill them, or if you're just trying to do something in time, which um, can come up with a deck like this, considering how control-based it is. Then for the uh, the fun and lovely normal summons, we have three tour guide and two rhino warrior. Uh, I think that three and two is okay. I was testing three and three, and I didn't like three rhino warrior. And to be perfectly fair, most of the time my tour guide just summons the BA monster that I need. So I just like to keep the rhino warrior for when I open it with like another BA monster so I could actually play the game. Moving on to the uh, the rest of the monster lineup, though, for hand traps, we just have three ash. It's the only technical hand trap that we play. But additionally to that, one of the, the spicy pieces that I play is triple gam seal. Um, this format with Drytron having, um, you know, Herald out, that's kind of important to be able to get over. And you can get over the Herald very easily, obviously, with the Gam Seal. Um, and then other cards, I mean, you can tribute a VFD, even though your opponent is probably going to uh, negate your field. At least you got rid of a VFD, uh, which is half the battle, <laughs> as we all know. So uh, I thought that was really important. I just thought overall it was a really good choice. And so far, I'm thoroughly enjoying it. Then uh, the special cards, we have the Dark Magician and the Red Eyes alongside the Red Eyes Fusion because um, we are playing Dragoon, which is another reason that Libic is so good because you can just summon BAs from your hand and not worry about them being destroyed, which is actually um, something that comes up semi-frequently. But moving on to the rest of the spells, though, seeing I should use the Red Eyes Fusion, we have Triple Droplet. Um, Droplet is decent. It's not terrible. It's not great, but... If you uh, need to play through something, you can, and the droplet is there for it. Obviously, it sh shuts off the uh, the Drytron board, which is pretty good. Then we have a Foolish Burial and a Called By. Um, they're just really good cards. <laughs> There's not much else to say. If anything, I'd probably cut the Foolish out of anything in this deck. Um, and if I were to toss something in, it'd probably be like a Cow Cab. Just another Burning Abyss monster, to be perfectly honest. 
Then moving on to the trap. So we have uh, triple solemn strike because strike is ridiculous. Um, just such a good card. I, I feel like I shouldn't have to explain this. It's just too good not to be playing. Um, then for all of our normal traps that we have, we have three torrential tribute, three dynamiscus uh, for our three ofs. Two ofs, I have two ice dragons prison, which um, does come up a lot. This card is pretty good. Um, I don't think you need three though. I think two is okay. Then I play two fiend griefing, um, which obviously fiend griefing is ridiculously good this format but i don't think you need three of it um i think that the, the dynamiscus gets the job done most of the time so but the fiend griefing is pretty solid i don't play back jack in here just because i don't think it's worth playing um then just in case you thought i forgot uh we play double trap trick because we do play a good amount of normal traps so being able to play even more copies of them is even better that is the main deck though like i said it's 50 cards it's actually really smooth uh 50 cards to be perfectly honest i was doing a lot of test hands earlier today and a little bit of play testing and i found that uh 50 cards is actually more fun for me than playing 40 so i i might actually just play 50 for burning abyss from now on uh and depending on how the ban list looks whenever it comes up that'll determine a whole lot too but moving on to the extra deck, we play two of the best card ever created in Yu-Gi-Oh! That is Dante, Traveler of the Burning Abyss. You guys already know. Uh, card's too strong. Second best card in the entirety of uh, Yu-Gi-Oh! history is our Beatrice, the Eternal Lady. Um, can't go wrong with these. Uh, you, I, I think that 2-1 is, you know, obviously 1 for Beatrice because it's all you can play. But I think 2 Dante is more than enough. You don't need a third. Uh, one Nightmare Shark. People are playing Fortune Tune, which I understand why, but I think that this is better um, infinitely because you get to hit your opponent for damage and make a Zeus, which is kind of nuts. Um, then we have a Downard Magician. Downard is obviously there to uh, go up into the Zeus plays even more. And then we play one Zeus. I was bouncing back and forth on playing a second one. Um, I'll talk about what you can change if you like want to play a second Zeus, so we'll, we'll get to that shortly. Then we have uh, a Dante, a purple Dante, of course, uh, and a Dragoon, which we already knew was going to be there, which obviously with there being a Dragoon, we know that we're going to have an Anaconda. Um, I would definitely play this engine if you're playing 50 cards. It's just, at 50 cards, it's fine because you're probably not going to uh, see anything that's going to hurt you. Um, then you have the Gravity Controller. This is the card that I would cut if I were to put in a second Zeus, because typically speaking, uh, the time that you make gravity controller is if you open up a seer. So what you do instead is like, let's say you open up seer and skarm, you just normal summon the skarm instead, and then you special summon the seer, you make an anaconda, um, and then you get to make a dragoon, and then at the end of your turn, your skarm can search for graph, and then you have that discard to negate with your dragoon, which then the graph will attempt to summon a skarm, and then the skarm gets automatically popped, and then at the end phase, you can search a tour guide. So you basically just loop your searching. So uh, if anything, if you want to play second Zeus, then cut the, uh, the gravity controller, but if you either can't afford a second Zeus or you don't want to play it, then just play the gravity controller. Um, then we have the Cherubini, Luigi Cherubini himself, and it's just too good. Helps you link climb and go into some pretty uh, pretty wonky combos. Then we play the Mascarena with a small nightmare package. This is to be expected. I think I play this in every single one of my Burning Abyss lists. Um, it's just really strong, just super, super strong, being able to shuffle cards, pop cards, you know, all the fun stuff. And then we just have the single copy of the Axis Code Talker. I'm not playing Boral Sword. Um, I'm not playing Chaos Goddess either. I play Chaos Goddess and Phantom Knights, but I don't play in Burning Abyss. I think that um, I think that the Axis Code is really all that you need. But that is the extra deck. Uh, pretty solid extra deck, to be perfectly honest. I, I really like it. It, uh, it does what it needs to do, which is important. The Dragoon really does most of the plays for you, if I'm being fair. Like, don't get me wrong, Dante is amazing, but Dragoon really uh, really gets this deck where it needs to be, in addition to the large amount of back row cards that we have. But moving on to the side deck, as I said before, we have uh, some hand traps. So we have the Triple Lancia and the Triple Droll, which is... Um, almost a staple in every side deck right now so this is nothing that should be surprising most people have seen this in almost every single side deck currently being played um it's just too good it really is just too good um but then the oddball hand trap that i play is triple ghost ogre so like at my locals and i think overall i'm starting to notice the climb in numeron players um it's just becoming a more popular deck 
and this card counters it, which is really good. There are other decks that this card is obviously good against too, but I won't I won't get into that. It's just a matter of um, knowing your matchups, obviously. Then for some spell cards, we have Backer Removal in that of Twin Twisters and Feather Duster. Um, this is pretty standard, not going to lie. This, especially for Burning Abyss, the Twin Twisters are like your best friend. Uh, you really can't go wrong with these. Feather Duster is just, you know, there. Uh, it, it, <laughs> it does its thing. You, know, you guys already know the drill there. Uh, then one more back row removal card would be the Red Reboot. This card is also absolutely nuts. Um, we have five cards that deal with back row, so you can't, you can't really go wrong. Uh, I don't play like um, Heavy Storm Duster just because I don't think it's that good of a trap trick target, to be perfectly honest. In this deck anyways, I don't think it is. Um, but obviously that's up for interpretation. And then the last card, we just play one Mischief of the Gnomes because we can dump it off of Beatrice, which is pretty crazy, not going to lie, being able to dump this card off of Beatrice. Um it just basically outs the virtual board turn one, which is crazy. Um, makes your going first boards even stronger with the Beatrice. So keep in mind, this card does definitely put in some work. Um, if you guys don't have any copies of this, I would highly consider picking them up uh, as soon as you can, even though we don't know how the next ban list is going to look. But I think even after that, if VFD gets banned, virtual world will still uh, be a thing. So keep your eyes out because it's not going away. It's just getting the proper hit that it needs. But that is the entirety of the deck profile, our main side and extra deck, our super spicy super strong burning abyss 50 card list um very very enjoyable to play very smooth playing from my testing there were a couple hands where i opened up five trap cards and i was still able to win because i just like took all of my opponent's resources out by playing trap cards um and then they couldn't do anything so that's perfectly fine as long as you get the win that's all that matters um you know it, it, that's what you're looking for you're just looking for the win but if you guys enjoyed the video like i said give it a thumbs up and like i said in the beginning of the video don't forget to smash that subscribe button it's thoroughly appreciated we're getting closer to i think 650 now um we're not there yet but i'm saying we're climbing towards 650 and then obviously after that 700 we're gonna keep going up and up and up uh the goal with within the next three months, I think is to hit 1000. So make sure that happens, you guys, because I appreciate it more than you can even know, or more than I can even explain. But for right now, this is Team Yugi Fails signing out.